All right, welcome back. So far we have been looking at interest rates that are compounded, but it's time to look at a new type of interest, which is simple interest. And simple interest, as it sounds, is a little simpler than compound interest. But let's quickly review what we know so far, and then we'll show you how simple interest is different than compound interest. So in our very first lesson, we looked at compound interest and we came up with this equation right here, where we have the accumulation or the future value of an investment is equal to the initial deposit times one plus the interest rate, which would be a compounded interest rate to a power of n, where n is the number of periods. And then we said that there is an alternate way to write this formula where we have the accumulation at time t is equal to the accumulation at time zero, which is just the initial deposit times the accumulation factor, where our accumulation factor equals this one plus i to the t power, where t is our number of time periods. And so this is what we're using right now when we are looking at compound interest. So then the question is, what does our accumulation factor for simple interest look like? Well, let's get rid of this question mark and we will see that in this case, it's not going to be one plus i to the t power, it's going to be one plus i times t where t is measured in years. And so this is the difference between compound interest and simple interest. Instead of taking your one plus i quantity to the number of years, you are multiplying that number of years by your simple interest rate. And so we would change this original equation we found if in a particular scenario, we were using a simple interest rate instead of a compound interest rate. And so that would look like this. We would have the future value is equal to that initial deposit times one plus i times the number of periods n, which in this case would be the number of years because this is always going to be measured in years with simple interest, at least in the majority of the cases for this course. And so this would be our simple interest equation. And so in most cases, when you're given a problem where someone is earning money over a certain period of time, it is going to be clarified what type of interest rate they have. It might say it's compounded or it might say that their interest rate is a simple interest rate. And so you just need to know the difference between those two because as you can see, their accumulation factors are going to be different. And so let's look at a very simple example that shows you how we use our simple interest formula. So if I have an initial deposit of $1,000 and I have an account that has a simple interest rate of 7%, right? This is going to be simple. And I let it sit in account for, let's say, t equals three years. What would I have after three years? What would be my accumulation or my future value in this scenario? Well, we wrote that the future value for a simple interest scenario is going to be equal to that initial deposit times one plus the interest rate times our amount in years. And so if we plug in our values while also noting that the interest rate is equal to 0 0.07 in decimal form, we are going to get that the future value equals 1000 times one plus 0 0.07 times three. Now it's very important when you calculate this that you multiply your interest rate by the number of years before you add it to one. Otherwise you will get an incorrect answer. So don't make the mistake of adding one to 0.07 before you multiply. But if we were to calculate this, we would find that our future value would be $1,210. That would be our future value with this simple interest rate of 7% after three years. And so how does this compare to compound interest rate? What if this 7% was a compound interest rate instead? Well, let's find out. Let's do that calculation too and compare the two. For compound interest, remember we have future value equals C times one plus I to the T power or N. It doesn't matter, it represents the same thing. And so if we plugged in the same values here, we would have that this is equal to 1000 times one plus 0.07 to the power of three, and this would be equal to 1000 times 1 1.07 to the third power. And if we plug that into our calculator, this would be equal to $1,225.04. And, and so we can see the difference between these two answers, right? This is how much we earned when we had a simple interest rate of 7%, and this is how much we earned when we had a compound interest rate of 7%. And you can see that over a three year period, we earned more interest in our account through the compound interest rate than we earned 
through our simple interest rate. And this is because as you earn more interest with a compound interest rate, you are increasingly earning more and more interest with every new period, rather than with simple interest where your interest increases at a consistent rate. It doesn't matter how long we have this simple interest rate for, the interest is going to increase by the same amount every single year. And that should be obvious because if you were to look at these two equations as functions of t, this would be an exponential function. So you can see how over time, the amount of interest earned is going to increase by larger and larger amounts. And our simple interest equation would be a linear equation. And so it would be just a straight line on a graph. So the amount of interest increases by the same amount every year. And we'll actually look at that at the end of this lesson. But let's quickly do another example. Okay, so for our second example, we have Kyle invests $500 in an account with 4% annual simple interest. How much does he accumulate in six months? Is this less than or greater than the amount he would accumulate if his interest was compounded yearly for the same period? So let's write down everything we know and then we'll worry about calculating each amount for each interest rate. So first of all, we know that Kyle invests $500. So that's his initial deposit. And we know that his interest rate is equal to 4% which is equal to 0 0.04, and this is going to be a simple interest rate, although we will use it as a compound interest rate when we answer the second part of the question. But let's stick with the first part for now, where we're looking at simple interest, and we want to know how much he accumulates in six months. So that's going to be time equals six months. Now, here's the thing about simple interest. For the purposes of this course, simple interest is always going to be calculated in terms of years, unless stated otherwise. In fact, most of the time, it's going to be yearly. So you really don't need to worry about non-yearly simple interest rates. So this isn't going to do us any good. We need to convert six months into a value of years. And so how many months are in a year? Well, there are 12 months in a year. So we could represent this as t equals six out of 12, right? Six months out of the 12 months in a year, which would be one half. So our t in this case, or our amount of time, would be one half year. And so I'll label that with years. So then let's do our calculation. So for simple interest, we have that the future value equals c times one plus i times t. And so then let's plug in and we will find that we have 500 times one plus 0 0.04 times one half. And we could reduce this. We know that half of 0 0.04 would be 0 0.02. And so 1 plus 0 0.02 would be 1.02. So this is going to be equal to 500 times 1.02, which is going to be equal to $510. And so that's how much Kyle earned after six months or one half of a year with a simple interest rate of 4% every year. So now let's compare that to how much you would accumulate if this interest rate was a compounded yearly rate, because we want to know if it's less than or greater than the amount we just found, which used a simple interest rate. So now we're going to have the future value equals c times one plus i to the t power, right? That's how we calculate this if it was compound interest. So then this is going to be equal to 500 times one plus 0 0.04 to the one half power, right? Because we can use this same value of t of one half year since we are looking at 0 0.04 as a compounded yearly rate. So since this is measured in years, our t should also be measured in years. So now let's simplify. We're going to have that this is equal to 500 times 1.04 to the one half power, and that will be equal to $509.90. So weirdly enough, this time our amount from compound interest is 10 cents less than our amount when we had a simple interest rate, which is the opposite of what we had last time, where our compound interest gave us more money over a three year period than our simple interest gave us over that same period. And so this leads to something interesting that I wanna talk about next. Okay, so if we were going to take our accumulation factor for our compound interest and our accumulation factor for our simple interest, and we graph them on a graph where our x axis is time and our y axis is our function of time or our accumulation factor, that is dependent on time. It would look a little bit like this. And what we'll notice is what I mentioned earlier that our accumulation factor for compound interest 
is an exponential function that generates more and more interest over time, while our simple interest accumulation factor is a linear function that increases by the same amount every time. It doesn't increase by larger and larger amounts like compound interest does. And so from this graph, what we can learn is that up until time equals one, or up until one year, our simple interest rate is going to give us more interest on an investment than our compound interest. But once we reach the one year mark and we go past it, compound interest is forever going to give us more interest. We are going to earn more interest from a compound rate than a simple rate once our time passes year one. And so that's really the big takeaway here. This graph can be intimidating to look at, but the main thing that you want to know is that a simple interest rate is going to give you more money within that first year. But once you get past that first year, compound interest rate is going to generate way more interest for you. And so a compound interest rate would be your preferred rate if you're going to invest for more than a year. And so this explains what happened in our two example problems in this video. Our first one, we looked at a three year period and that showed us that compound interest generated more interest over a three year period than simple interest, which makes sense because as we see here, three years is greater than one. And so therefore our compound interest is definitely going to generate more interest than our simple interest rate. And then in our second example, we saw that for a six month period, which was less than a year, that our simple interest rate generated more interest. Granted, it was only 10 cents, but but it was still more. And so that is something to keep in mind as you use these two different types of interest rates. All right, so that's all I have on this lesson about simple interest. If you wanna see some more examples, I'm going to have an examples video linked in the description as well as at the end of this video that I really encourage that you click on because there's going to be a lot more challenging problems in there involving simple interest and compound interest that I think that you are going to want to see. So be sure to check those out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. But if you don't, that is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.